actually stays shut during uh, regular driving to lower drag and they'll open as needed to cool the brakes off as you're driving. This car is equipped with uh, 20 inch wheel stock front and back, 255 in the front, 315 in the back. And it uh, comes with their latest iteration or latest generation of their carbon ceramic brake system. So this car has new aerodynamic features, uh, of course spawned from wind tunnel design, um, sort of inspired by racing technology, this aero bridge that channels air through that little passageway. You get increased downforce, decreased drag significantly, significantly more than the 599. 599 had something similar, but it was in the back by the back window. They had these little inlets, uh, but this is much more drastic. And seeing the wind flow through there and an the image of a wind tunnel is just gorgeous. You can sort of see the wind go through it, and it's just amazing to see that uh, when they're testing it. So while carrying the title of most powerful, fastest production Ferrari ever made at that time, it's amazing that they maintain complete drivability and they maintain a very solid connection to their heritage. This car reminds me a lot of the side profile of a 312P um, or the back end looks like a Lusso or a 250 GTO. You know, so it has that sort of old side profile of a BB, but it's a brand new car. It's amazing. One thing I love is that 3x5 rear fog light. And I also really like the all LED brand new tail lights with a single tail light approach, which looks like all the new Ferraris will have. That 3x5 rear fog, uh, rear fog light also has the real camera in it, but it's very F1 inspired. Those are the tail lights of, of race cars. So the exhaust exits are turbine inspired, so you can see those fins are, are kind of uh, corkscrewed, so you get a turbine look. And of course, they exit air from a 740 horsepower brand new V12 that has 509 foot-pounds of torque, 80% of which is available at 2500 RPM, which is amazing for a naturally aspirated V12. So let's listen to it. So this car is actually uh, lighter by 154 pounds than the 599, a lot stiffer. Um, Dimensional-wise, the, the car is two and a half inches lower, a little bit narrower, a little bit shorter in the length overall, a little bit uh, shorter in the wheelbase. And the, actually, the engine sits a little bit lower and a little bit further back than the 599 to assist in the, in the CG. So they've improved in everything, everything that you would want to improve on the 599. So we'll talk about it, we'll drive and we'll go through the interior. Before we proceed, we want to take a moment to thank Global Motor Cars of Houston. They have a wide range of inventory they've opened up to us to provide you these reviews. They have newer cars, certified cars, exotic cars, custom cars, classic cars, um, luxury cars, daily drivers, SUVs. So they have a wide range that can cater to a lot of customers' needs. If you're interested in purchasing a vehicle or you find any vehicle in, in our reviews interesting, we ask you contact them at globalmotorcars.com. Alrighty folks, this is going to be incredible. We have an exceptional example of a F12 to go through, uh, the interior full in detail. There's so much to talk about being that this is a completely new car and it's literally the most exceptional grand touring car that, that they've ever made. We completely agree with that statement. Uh, so let's go through some of the interior and talk about some of the form, function, uh, some of the button layout, and some more in detail. So here we go. We have the key, uh, which is almost identical as the uh, 458 key. They don't have that sharp tip. It's actually very flat on the tip on the modern Ferrari uh, keys. They don't have a keyless system yet, but I, I suppose maybe they'll have one in the future. Who knows? I mean, Ferrari is very driven by heritage, so it'll be interesting to see if they drop the traditional key. So let's talk about the, some of the interior in detail. I should say that the door operation and the feeling you get uh, from the locking mechanism itself is similar across all the models. Um, so to begin here, Ferraris can be options to the owner's desire, I mean to no extreme. And they have a new tailor-made program for the truly bespoke orders. This car is one of the most exceptional 
tasteful builds we've seen in factory form. What you see here is a little over $70,000 in just options alone, dealer options alone. There's bare carbon fiber everywhere, uh, and the interior is almost a bone colored cream with a contrasting black inserts and Alcantara inserts. I don't think there's a panel in this car that wasn't optioned in some way. The tight fit and finish of the leather panels also appears on the Ferrari, other Ferrari models. Uh, this F12's contrast stitching and French seams where the black and cream contrasting Alcantara's, uh, I mean, where those meet, I mean, it's gorgeous. It resembles something that a, like a famous Italian clothing designer would have imagined. Um, the incredible thing is that the edges and the corners and everything are, are lined to perfection. They're lined true by hand. So on the panel here, you have the traditional door handle of the modern Ferraris, like the handle of a 458 and probably other newer generation Ferraris. And just below that, you have the controls to open the trunk and the fuel door below, which are located conveniently in the panel rather than on the floorboard. The door sill here is uh, presented in bare carbon, which has a nice glossy finish top with a, a Ferrari emblem justified center. And when you tap it, it has that true thick quality sensation. Um, and you can tell that, I mean, it's just very, very stiff piece. I mean, obviously it's carbon, it's going to be stiff, but you feel the quality. Above it, you have the seat controls, the lumbar, the heat, very simple seat controls. And uh, this, the, the, the seat again echoes the tasteful setup of the color matched Alcantara inserts. So they're the same color, but one of them is leather and one of them is Alcantara with a contrast black Ferrari stitch, the, the horse is stitched. And the, the headrest is integrated into the seat. Um, so the, the, it's all one piece and the con there's contrast stitch contour lines that follow the contour of the seat. So let's get inside and uh, start it up. So the startup procedure is similar to other modern Ferraris. You get in, you put the key in the ignition, you, so you give it ignition first, put your foot on the brake, keep your foot on the brake, and push the start button. The sound of that V12, I think majority of people, that's their favorite thing about the F12, is the sound of that new V12. So I'm going to put the Manatino switch here in sport. And um, we got just we just got done reviewing the 458 Spider. A lot of the functions and things we said they carry over between models, like these air vents, uh, very Fer LaFerrari-like, or I would suppose the LaFerrari is very F12-like in the air vents. But a lot of the steering wheel-centered function design um, comes from Formula One. So, for example, the controls traditionally engaged by stocks are now buttons on the wheel. So the result is not having to take your hands off the wheel because there's nothing behind the wheel uh, other than the shift paddles. So you can engage the shift paddles and they'll always be in one place. They don't move with the wheel. Um, so you can engage a shift paddle there and you have your uh, conveniently located turn signal, wipers, your Manatino switch, your bumpy road switch, which makes softens up the shocks, uh, so when you're going through bumpy road, it actually makes the car pretty comfortable. Your engine start switch, your high beam pass, and your other turn signal switch. Fortunately enough for us, this car being so heavily loaded happens to have uh, the, the gear change and red line LEDs in that carbon fiber inset right there above in the top of the steering wheel. And I think they activate around 5,500 RPM. And they basically tell you when to change gears. So like the 458 that we looked at, uh, the vehicle dynamic assistant panel is here off to the left. And I thought it was pretty interesting that the cruise control button is actually, um, it says pit speed, but it's really the cruise control button. So I thought that was pretty cool. And from this view, you can see the quality finish in the footrest metal panels and the footwell there, as well as a nice finish on the rim of that door panel speaker. But the four-way control on this VDA panel is there's an up, back, down, left, right button and a center mounted OK switch. Because this car has parking distance controls right now, it'll only let me dim it. Um, but the navigation is the same as the 458. And opposite of that four-way button on the infotainment, you have a jog dial, which is moved up, down, left, and right to navigate through the infotainment. So because we go into these details... Um, very good on the 458 Spider. If you want to know more about the function of the VDA, how to navigate through it, how to use the infotainment system, um, sort of 
anything in detail about these two functions because they're so similar. You can watch that review and we go through all those things in detail. Now the center cost on the dash area, you can see the air vents, which we said earlier were like identical to the LaFerrari basically. They probably carry over, but they look like thrust nozzles of a MiG-29. They're very aeronautical. Um, so before LaFerrari came out, this was the premier production touring model you could purchase from Ferrari with very impressive numbers in 2012 when it came out. Fastest around a Fiorano circuit, uh, and not by any close measure. Two seconds faster than the Enzo, three and a half seconds faster than the 599, and even a second faster than the proposed, uh, or the proper focused car, the 599 GTO. So that's quite impressive. So naturally, we can assume that the uh, LaFerrari will shatter all those records. So a bit below the vents, uh, there's a bare carbon separation detail where the logo is, and you have the driver passenger temperature controls, uh, center-mounted fan control, uh, AC on-off switch, and the directional um, controls the, for the knobs for the passenger and driver. Something unique about this is that little control for that integrated radar detector, which is located next to these two buttons. And um, the button to raise the front suspension is up here mounted on the dash when it was on the center bottom center console of the 458 and uh, there's a new button here that i saw to the left and uh, this is a new function which i've seen a dual view camera so you have a view of the left and right and it's here where the map goes they have this screen so this is assist you merging if you you might be in a blind spot or obstructed view and um it's pretty interesting that you can push a button and see the forward sight of the when you're parking or something so it's a front facing camera as well so this is the new um, tunnel console design which has a central bridge below it is a perfect spot for your phone which will keep it in place in in any form of spirited driving the functional center bridge is finished in bare carbon and has a very lightweight design uh, the drive mode function found here is reverse uh, automatic mode performance art which is the launch control and the hazard light switch behind all this you have the the window switches and this is all again bare bare carbon in this case um and all functional and lightweight super stiff front and back i mean it's a very gorgeous line that follows through and you can see right through the central bridge there so here you have a 12 volt power supply uh, next to that a usb input that integrates with the infotainment system so because this car is officially a grand touring car, you have a raised shelf behind the seats for with has, that have volume that you can stow away items, and these items can be secured via hand-finished leather straps. And um, from what we noticed, this is a connection to their heritage. I mean, the fact that you can sit in a modern car and experience true to traditional coach work is fantastic. And so coming back to take a look at the passenger area, you can see the gorgeous fine stitching that lines the, the seams on the dash. All of the carbon ordered in this car stretches through to the other side of the dash into the passenger area and envelopes all of their AC vents. So inlaid in this leather is the uh, F12 Berlin and a logo and below some, some of these F12s have a passenger display option that gives them RPM speed so they're engaged in the experience as well. I mean we're truly impressed by the amount of carbon in this car. So right in the center of the dash off to the left you have that of course the glove box open switch. And so coming back to the other side of the steering wheel, if you want to engage or disengage the parking brake, the parking brake control is found here to the lower left of the steering wheel. So you have the um, auto park and the manual, manual engage switch, the mirror control and the headlight knob. Below the headlight knob is this rear fog light, which is pretty cool. It's that three by five sort of F1 looking uh, rear brake light, but it's manually turned off in this car. Um, as a fog light switch here on the knob. So going to the top stack, you can see the home link system and the integrated radar detection system. Um, in the main panel, you have the tow switch, the passenger airbag on off, the door unlock lock, um, the driver reading lamp, interior cabin lamp, passenger reading lamp, and your park distance control. So you can turn your park distance sensors on and off. And you can see that the roof is completely finished in gorgeous black Alcantara. So uh, just to reiterate, there's nothing really different about the VDA of this car and other models like the 458. But essentially, 
the, the VDA is where you want to go to display information about the current status of the components of the car or components of the vehicle dynamics for that matter. This would be things like temperatures, levels, settings, lap times, things like that. Like where is the D, is the EDIF in its maximum setting? So things that you would need to drive the car spirited or normal, you can set up in there and you can completely set up the car, the LED lights. Um, any other setup in the car can be done through the VDA system as well. So we go through that in the 458 review. So if you want to know more about the VDA or the infotainment of this car, watch our 458 uh, Spider review. It's pretty cool that you can actually put manual gauges, but analog gauges, but they're digital. So um, the radar date detector display is right here above the mirror. So I don't know if you can see that in the other shot, but it's a little display there. The controls by the wheel, steering wheel, but this is the actual display uh, itself. So let's open the hood, open the fuel door, open the trunk, um, and look at the storage back there. It's actually a very spacious trunk for a Grand Touring supercar with 700 plus horsepower. 700 the horsepower club is a very, very exclusive club. Um, it's all covered in beautiful quality carpeting. The red bag has the car cover in it. You have a battery condition, metal and leather storage latch tie downs, all very functional. And you have the same tie downs on the other side. So uh, there's a convenient shade for your trunk items that moves to provide a bit more space. And there's a similar shade that mounts to the trunk door, which is removable. This serves to provide shade and I'm sure some type of security to not expose the contents. But the latches are very easy to manipulate and it's removable very quickly. So this is a ha also has a uh, newer style fuel filler cap. So there's no um, cap. It's closed and open via the door itself. Now let's take a closer peek to the crown jewel of the F12. The all new 6.3 liter front mid mounted V12, which again sits a bit lower, a uh, bit farther back in the F12 over the 599 GTB. And with, with everything, the efficiency gain over the 59, 599 and just the engine alone is fantastic. So let's drive it and see what a completely nuts to bolts new Ferrari and new Ferrari front mounted V12 actually feels like. Alrighty folks, we are behind the wheel of the 2014 Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. It is the top of the range grand touring car for Ferrari. Uh, before the LaFerrari came out this was their cream of the crop fastest car around their Fiorano track. Road cars, obviously not well, the, the specialty cars, the Evoluzione cars, the XX cars, they're just their road going cars. We have 730 horsepower, 8,250 RPM, which is pretty incredible, 509 uh, foot pounds of torque. And it's all out of a 6.3 liter V12, which is song when it comes to Ferrari sounds. And this thing sounds beautiful. It's gorgeous sound. Uh, of course all of those alloys, the whole car's construction is, is aluminum construction rather than uh, mostly carbon fiber which is what you would expect out of Ferrari. Uh, but they did this because of uh, repair, apparently because of repair and things like that uh, to make it easier to repair. Instantaneous shifts. This thing just sounds ready, feels ready. So you got all aluminum construction. Uh, this car is brand new from the grounds up, nuts and bolts. Everything is new about this car. Uh, replacing the old 599, you're talking about 76% more downforce, 30% more efficiency, uh, more power, faster, more luxurious, uh, better to, to drive, easier to drive, yeah, easier on the body. Uh, so everything is, is more drivable at this car. It's, it's more aerodynamic in a lot of sense. You have hydraulic uh, flaps in front of your brakes when your brakes get too hot. Uh, you have hydraulic flaps that open up to allow more air to access them. You have performance start or otherwise known as launch control just like the other cars. 
Uh, you have zero to 60 in three seconds. I mean, this car across the board, Ferrari claims 225 mile an hour top speed. And honestly, uh, from what I read in the American cars, you're getting more like 211. Um, but what's the difference at that point, right? <laughs> the uh, double clutch transmission in this car has shorter gear ratios because of all the power. It's the most powerful car they made um, again up until the La Ferrari so there was a lot of things they had to do different but other than that I mean this car is very drivable I don't get the immediate sensation that I'm driving the fastest car that I've ever driven in my life which honestly for our reviews for maybe a year or two coming this will be the most powerful uh, the fastest car that we've ever tested it is an absolute um, dream and opportunity that we will, we are very appreciative of that that global motor cars gave us this car to uh, review so you get very nice throttle blip rev matching downshifts when you downshift and we'll open it up here in a second to see how that v12 sounds at full song the all of the ac vents here it's so nice they're very aviation oriented so they can sort of point anywhere and um, very easy to use, very easy to modulate. Um, everything is pretty ergonomic. So let's open it up here and oh my god! <laughs> oh man, that was amazing. I just got to 60 miles an hour in like three seconds. I don't even know what happened. When this car gets moving, it moves and it does not stop. Torque is there, although it says max power is at 8,000. talking about a car that's faster than the Aventador, more exciting to drive than the Aventador, um, all around more classy than the Aventador, but the Aventador does have doors that go up. Amazing! Wow! The handling on this car is ridiculous. It's really planted um, in all conditions you put it through truly is a grand touring car for the distinguished customer. Beautiful downshifts. But I tell you what, with all this power, with all of this aggressiveness, and focus and that's the uh, radar detector buzzing there telling me that there's which is probably the gas station automatic door but honestly this car is absolutely drivable like no other really you have a grand touring car with immense power and it feels very civilized very civilized and in this driving condition if I was to push this bumpy road button now all of a sudden the magnetic ride control will sort of smooth everything out and make this car even more drivable which which is pretty impressive so in the upper class of super grand touring cars the Aventador the um, 700 horsepower range so to speak which there's not many it's just this in the Aventador I honestly could say that I would be happy with either I might be leaning towards this car simply because of the the class difference something you can show up to a golf course in something you can show up to a racetrack in and something you can show up to a nightclub in and and equi equivalently do the same thing so ergonomic wise while you're behind the wheel i haven't uh really had a reason to take my hands off the wheel but i could take my hands off uh, and everything is within reach i don't have to get very far for anything and of course i don't have to get it very far at all for the, the normal functions This car makes amazing sounds. 
feels fantastic. The torque is outrageous. When it pins you back into the seat, your head is there and it's not moving until you lift off the throttle. It is absolutely blitzkrieg. You put the hammer down on this car and you'll be going bonkers until you release it. And so that'll conclude our review.